So you think you understand negative numbers? I'm about to change that perception. All I need is two numbers, 1 and minus 1. Minus 1 is the lesser, 1 is the greater. So nothing special here. Now let us consider ratios. Minus 1 divided by 1 and 1 divided by minus 1. A mathematically gifted person will recognize an equality here. From a philosophical perspective, however, we find that the lesser number relates to the greater number in the same way as the greater does to the lesser, which is nonsense. This argument may look artificial, but that's because you are too modern. This paradox is attributed to Antoine Arnault, a close friend of Pascal, who lived in the 17th century. And back then his paradox was a hit, because the perception of mathematics was different. Leibniz, for example, could not resolve the confusion, but he never disbelieved the negative numbers because of their obvious utility in mathematics. Other greats like Euler had an even weirder opinion on the numbers below zero. We know very well that decreasing the denominator of a fraction while keeping the numerator unchanged will result in a bigger number. Well, Euler considers a divided by zero, which is infinity. Yes, they were actually writing it like this without any back thoughts. Now imagine we divide a by a negative number, which by definition is less than zero. According to what we said about fractions, whatever comes out has to be greater than infinity? Keeping jokes aside, let's consider a serious question. Why negative times negative is positive? Seriously, can we justify it by a more fundamental fact from arithmetic? To see why this considered to be basic rule is very unintuitive, let's use a familiar number line. Zero in the middle, positives to the right, negatives to the left. Addition means stepping to the right, subtraction is going to the left. Multiplication is nothing but a shorthand for repeated additions or subtractions. So, positive times positive. We just end up more positive. So, a plus here. Positive times negative can still be made sense of. Make repeated steps to the left. So, a minus overall. But negative times negative? Both of them start on the left, but they somehow end up on the right? What does it mean to repeat something a negative number of times anyway? So mathematicians kept using minuses while disbelieving them until they started to go abstract. You see, this is what mathematics wants to do – generalize as far as possible. Humanity went from naturals to integers to rationals to irrationals to complex and so on. And the further you go, the more things you want to be able to describe. And every new abstraction has to preserve the properties of the previous one. For instance, recall a distributive law. If we wanted to work for negative numbers, what should minus times a minus be? If we say that it is again a minus, we get an invalid equality. But saying that it's a plus works well. So, if we want to carry this property over to new number classes, we have to accept this rule for negative numbers. In this way, negative times negative is positive simply because we say so. Because this is what makes mathematics work. However, this wasn't enough. To break the psychological barrier, mathematicians needed more reasons. And they found those reasons when they abstractified not numbers, but operations with numbers. 
take an equal sided triangle. Rotate by 120 degrees. We get the same shape. Reflect it in the central aces. The same triangle again. I am describing symmetries of a triangle here. Obviously, we can compose these symmetries, and in this way, they begin to resemble integers. Transformations are numbers, and composition is like addition. This is one of the earliest examples of a group. If your group has a way to describe not only addition, but also multiplication, it becomes a ring. If you allow division, it becomes a field. And negative elements have a more natural representation in groups. For example, a rotation in the opposite direction. This abstraction proved to be incredibly valuable in real life. Every modern cryptographic protocol uses groups. Group theory explains crystal structures, predicts the existence of fundamental particles, and explains the chemistry of molecules by describing their symmetries. This is how far we had to go in order to believe the negative numbers. In a way, nature made us believe in the concepts we came up with as humanity.